Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from the Czech Republic. Ooh. All right, we used to have the Czechoslovakia, and then we had the Czech Republic, and we have Slovakia, or Slovenia. Slovenia is a different country, Slovakia. And, um, yeah, da-da-da-da-da. Uh, the Czech Republic, um, very, very beautiful place. Prague, mm, been there many times. Love that. Now, what we have is something that was unique, because, um, first of all, it's 100, 89.90, it's a 100-euro bottle. And then you do this. Screw, screw, screw. Hmm. All right, so 41.7% alcohol by volume. Um, as I mentioned already, 100 euro bottle, 1,100 bottles in total. I have bottle number, wrong side. I have bottle number um, 449, and this was actually dedicated to the Velvet Revolution, which started actually on the 17th of November, 1989. So um, this is a single malt Czech whiskey, very, very good, from the Czech Republic. And um, yeah, there's another bottle um, from the Czech Republic. Uh, Scotch Test Dummies have done it. It's called the Hammerhead, and it was all basically made back in 1989. Now, this was distilled in 2002, so this is a different thing. Now, that Hammerhead um, from... Uh, 1989 it was first bottled um, with an age of 20 years so what they did is in the year um, 2010 they first bottled it and then in 2013 and 2015 and 2017 and now in 2020 going back from that same stock they now actually have 30 year old um, Czech whiskey now this is not 30 years old this is 17 years old so 41.7%, whiskey base number 142180, and it belongs to the company called Stock, S-T-O-C-K. <clears throat> they also make the Hammerhead, and they make a lot of other liquors and other things there. Um, so that's that, whiskey base um, number I mentioned. Uh, oh, the company goes back all the way back to 1784. Many, many com companies, um, especially alcoholic producing companies, can go back a very, very long time. But even that's a long, long time. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually compare it to something which you also cannot get. This is a club bottling for us over here in Germany for whiskey.de from Horst Luning and his company. Uh, this is a 15-year-old Glenmorie that was actually um, bottled at 46%. The normal 15-year-old uh, at the moment is only bottled at 40%. So this was a mixture of American um, bourbon cask as well as sherry casks. Now, um, the bottle's almost empty. Yes, I need to finish this off. I'm so sorry. Um, not much left in here, but I will do that soon. Um, it's been this way for about three months now, and the bottle's been open for about eight in total. All right, it's good. Um, what we have here is definitely an interesting color. So take a look at that. There we got the sherry. There we have that sherry and American. Now, what we actually have here is a whiskey that was matured in barrels, oak barrels, and then finished in Oroloso sherry casks. How long was the finish? Can't find any information on it. Um, nothing on here. I love the back. It says, elegant and rich with flavor. As if anything didn't have flavor. All right. Um, this limited edition 17-year-old malt, malt has a, a distinctive smooth finish. Well done. Well done. All right. So, um, yeah. So not very many whiskeys coming from the Eastern European countries at the moment. Eastern Europe, um, by the way, Russia and also the other um, Baltic, um, down to the Baltics, also um, Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine, um, Belarus. This is one of the main growth industries, actually, for many, many whiskey companies. Johnny Walker's booming there. Um, Irish whiskey's booming there. And therefore, they should actually have a very, very big market for this as well. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Good. Let's take the nose. This is a very, very sweet nose. Um, that's raspberries. But, one second. I smell a little bit deeper and I get a little bit of like a pine cone moment. Which worries me a tiny little bit, to be honest. But it's a fruity, very vibrant um, flavor aroma. Over here, the Glenmorie. 
it's much subtler. There is a little bit of barley sweetness. Um, there's a little bit of oak. There's a little bit more of an alcohol moment. 46 versus 41.7. 15 versus 17. Around 40 euros versus 100 euros, basically. And this has a little bit more of a um, lemon type of citrus acid moment in there. To be honest, I'm not a great fan of this bottle. I picked something not so good to try something not so good, compared to this, something not so good. All right, cheers. Let's try this, 41.7%. It's much better than I thought it was going to be. I was expecting something bad. It's not bad. Um, it tastes like a perfectly good 35 to 40 euro whiskey. I paid 100. <laughs> Do I feel cheated? Do I feel a little ripped off? Yes, I do. Um, there's very, very seldom a bottle. Every single bottle you see here that I um, review, I actually basically buy the bottle, do a bottle share with some of my friends over here in Germany. Um, I have a WhatsApp group where there are two groups actually because only 250, 50, 55 people can go in a group. So I have about 350 people in these groups and they actually say, oh, I'll take 5 CL, I'll take 10 CL and so on. And the last um, three, four months, there's been three bottles, basically, that I have not been able to share entirely. This bottle, there was something from France called the Nizaki, um, which people didn't know about, and they were like, nah, it's a little too expensive for that. And there was a um, other bottle from Japan, from Mars Distillery, um, from the Tsukini, um, and it was a 199-euro, three-year-old uh, single barrel exclusively for Germany and then every one of my uh, uh, groups kind of wrote like are you crazy three years old and 200 euros no the limit has been reached no and so um, they basically understood which I did not understand that usually whiskey from non whiskey producing um, countries we should or could avoid so yes um, Taiwan can produce wonderful whiskeys. Um, yes, India can produce wonderful whiskeys. South Africa, maybe. Uh, Czech Republic, well, it's to be told if that's really going to be wonderful or not. As I said, this is nice. I get a nice little bit of, of uh, pistachio at the end. It actually smells a tiny little bit like pistachio um, uh, shell. So the salted pistachio shell here. Yep. Um, it's nice. I actually like this. This is going to be like a sea whiskey. I'm going to fail this whiskey for price, for value for money. I'm insulted that I paid 100 euros for this, um, unfortunately. But hey, that's life. Live and learn sometimes. All right, good. One last time here on the nose. Uh, you know what I didn't do in my German video? I didn't even add a little bit of water to this. Let's go for the three drops. It is 41.7%, so... Uh, I can't really say that it helped it in any way here. Mm. It pulled out a little bit of that woodiness. The, um, the sherry moment was diluted. And the wood moment came a little bit more. Now, the question is, what type of cask did they use in the Czech Republic? Did they have ex-bourbon barrels? I don't know. I do know that the hammerhead from 1989 was actually stored in real Czech oak. And I do know that European oak today is often harvested either in Romania or also in um, Hungary. And so sometimes it might have very, very close... Um, in that same region is the Czech Republic. So very seldom are you getting any new wood from Spain or from France. So if it's a um, European oak and it doesn't say Spanish European oak or French European oak, it will probably be somewhere from Eastern Europe.
All right, Eastern Europe is booming, so I hope this actually has a good success there. In the German shops at the moment, it's kind of dead in the water. No one's buying it. I um, can understand at that price point, to be honest. A little bit of a coating um, oily moment there. As I said, a solid C. Um, I would give it a solid C for a 35 to 40 euro on price tag, but 100 euros. Urgh. In my English video, I said, actually, let's take a little rid of that one here. It's a seven year old whiskey. Yay. It's almost what it tastes like as well. Um, that would have been a fair price, a fair age. Everything would have been very, very nice. But the 17 years old, I just don't, I'm not getting it here. Going over to 15 year old Galimori, by the way. On the nose, it's okay. Barley, spice, lemon, uh, barley, sweetness, and lemon spice. Yes, got it. Forty-six mm -hmm. percent more alcohol, and also more tannin, more dry, more old wood moments. If I were to choose between the two of these. I would actually have to choose our Pratno, um, the vel which means velvet, um, and so mm, the, this is a little bit sweeter, this is a little bit more velvety, this is just not my cup of tea, I'm sorry. Glenmore makes great single casks, they have some good independent bottles, but many of the lower budget um, supermarket whiskeys from Glenmore are ah, not really cutting um, getting what I want from a whiskey. All right, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, tell others. Please um, share the video if you're so kind, maybe with some people from the Eastern Europe nations. Um, and also, that's my question of the day, is do you know of any um, distilleries that are actually behind the former Iron Wall? So old um, communists, I know 1989 basically is when the wall fell, um, or in the year... Um, and could you know any other distilleries back there? Um, maybe, I don't know, from Poland that's making whiskey, or Russia, or Belarus, or um, Ukraine, or other places that are making whiskey at the moment. I don't know very many at all, to be honest. I might learn something from you. Thank you very much for watching. All the best. Don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe and all. And I'll see you back here very, very soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.